We continue our off-season series looking at the top 25 free agents. Today, we examine the top five landing spots for Corbin Burns. What's going on, baseball fans? Jeremy Latiquente here for the Baseball Banter broadcast, bringing you the top five landing spots for Corbin Burns. When it comes to this right-handed pitcher, he had a very good season for the Baltimore Orioles after being traded over from the Milwaukee Brewers. So it's going to be interesting to see where he potentially lands and what kind of an impact he can make. So we're going to look at our top five spots, starting with number five. Now, the number five team on my list is that of the San Francisco Giants. I think there's an opportunity for San Francisco to really try to recapture the magic that they had in the early 2010s when they were winning championships every other year. It was built on pitching and defense. They already re-signed Matt Chapman to a long-term contract to keep him there in the Bay Area playing under Bob Melvin, something that he did successfully well across the Bay in Oakland playing for the athletics so going back to a pitching first mentality i think could really suit the san francisco giants well we know that they now have a new gm running the ship there so being able to go back to an emphasis on pitching and starting pitching most specifically i think really benefits the san francisco giants they have a very big ballpark then it allows for a pitcher the caliber of corbin burns to really be able to take advantage and maximize his strengths being able to have uh, a team playing behind him defensively that is going to be able to cover expansive ground in that ballpark allows him to really go out there and pitch aggressively being able to go out there and try and dominate and by having that pitching first mentality the san francisco giants can put themselves back into a position where they are a postseason contender i think going out and signing a guy like corbin burns we know that they uh, over the past couple of off seasons have really gone out and tried to spend big money on bringing in super star caliber players maybe this is the offseason they can get it done with an emphasis on pitching now the number four team on my list is that of the st louis cardinals i think the cardinals are heading into a very interesting and crucial season for them they've had a down year the past couple of two seasons and when you look at where they are in terms of that division it is in my opinion a wide open division i think all the teams are going to be extremely competitive obviously right now it is the brewers division to lose but if the Cardinals can go out and bring in a pitcher like Corbin Burns to pair with a guy like Sonny Gray atop their rotation, it can really allow them to maximize their efforts. I think that for St. Louis, much like with the Giants that I just mentioned, an emphasis on starting pitching can truly help them advance into the postseason. I think that this is a, a team that has to get back to its basic roots. This is one of the most legendary and historic franchises in baseball history. There's the reason why they have 11 championships in their history. This is an organization that was built on pitching and defense and speed. And getting back to that is really going to allow them to get back into being one of the perennial contenders in this National League Central division. I think that for the Cardinals, being able to go out and and put a little money aside for a guy like Corbin Burns to help solidify them, to be able to help lengthen games for them, to be able to maximize the back end of that bullpen with a guy like Ryan Helsley. It really allows the team to be able to better utilize their talents and their assets. And by doing so, it really starts with the starting pitching. So bringing in a guy like Corbin Burns can truly help this organization get back to its roots. Now, the number three team on my list might seem like a strange fit, given that they already have four legitimate starters. And to be able to extend out a fifth really would seem like a, an embarrassment of riches, to be honest. But for the Philadelphia Phillies, bringing in a guy like Corbin Burns maximizes what this rotation is, and it maximizes their window for this team. I think that when you look at what a guy like Corbin Burns could be, you can slot him at the number two spot behind Zach Wheeler or the number three spot behind Aaron Nola. More than likely, he would get slotted in at that two spot. 
when you would do that, you extend the lineup of this rotation. You extend the ability to be able to push back on and not have to rely so much on the bullpen. Obviously, you have young dynamic arms in Christopher Sanchez and Ranger Suarez. You have veteran leaders in Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola. Fitting in a guy like Corbin Burns to this Phillies rotation really pushes this team to the utmost. Obviously, there are things with this offense that really push this team. That's where it's really built is on the pitching and the power of the offense. And when you bring in another guy like a Corbin Burns and you slot him into that rotation, you lengthen out what this team is capable of doing. You lengthen out what they're able to do and why this team is so powerful and dynamic is because of those four starters. You add in a fifth and you make it so almost impossible to not have a bad night if you're the opposing team's offense when you have to deal with those five starters going into a series. Obviously, when it comes to the postseason, you really only rely on four. But if you have five legitimate starters that you can go out there with, there's no doubt about it. It makes you even more of a threat. Think about it in terms of a short series. When you run out a, 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 trip, a quartet of, you know, Zach Wheeler, Corbin Burns, Aaron Nola, and either Christopher Sanchez or Ranger Suarez. There's no doubt the Phillies could be an even more powerful team by adding in a guy like Corbin Burns. Do I think that they're going to necessarily go down a bidding war for Corbin Burns? Maybe not. But if given the right price, again, John Middleton is a guy to me that is all in all the time on trying to win a world series for the philadelphia phillies and i don't think that he would hesitate at all to add in another arm to that starting rotation this is to me one of the best owners in all of baseball because he wants to win and he is putting the emphasis back on the field he's putting the money back on the field and going after a guy like corbin burns could truly put the phillies at a severe advantage in the national league Now, if we're discussing an embarrassment of riches, it is the number two team on my list, the Los Angeles Dodgers. When you look at what the Dodgers did in 2024, winning the World Series is absolutely incredible. But even more so when you think about the fact that there were so many questions about their starting rotation. Without question, the trio that they used in Jack Flaherty, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, and Walker Bueller were dynamic. They were all dominant in the World Series, and it allowed them to be able to come out victorious because they were able to use that bullpen that was so strong in the right spots. They, instead of being able to have to go to that second tier of, of relievers, they were able to use their A guys because their starters gave them length. Jack Flaherty is a free agent. Walker Bueller is set to be in a year. The Dodgers are going to need to be able to really sustain a long-term run. Obviously, we're expecting Shohei Otani to come back and be pitching next season. They have Yoshinobu Yamamoto, but imagine adding in a guy like Corbin Burns to that mix. And if they can go out and, and pick back up a guy like Jack Flaherty, now you ha truly have an embarrassment of ridges because you know that with a guy like Shohei Otani, you have to go to a six-man rotation. You bring in a guy like Corbin Burns to be that guy who gives you that every day, that once every five days start. You then mix in those extra off days for guys like uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto and Shohei Otani and now you truly have an embarrassment of all riches for me the Dodgers are a team that is going to be very aggressive this offseason because they want to be that dynasty they want to be what the late 90s Yankees were they want to make that their thing now they don't want to just win one and fall off a cliff they want to keep this going they want to make it a dynastic run and this is the way they go about it and do it you add more to that team than is already there and Corbin Burns could be that next piece And the number one team on my list is that of the Baltimore Orioles. There is a new ownership group in Baltimore that is looking to keep this team as a perennial contender. There's no doubt they have a ton of young superstars that are blossoming into their very own and more on the way. So being able to have a legitimate ace in Corbin Burns come back into the fold is something that the new ownership group from the Baltimore Orioles is going to want to be able to do. They want to be able to put their stamp on it and make clear that this is not the same team that was run by the Angelos family. They want to make it clear that this team is a ownership group 
that wants to build this team into a perennial contender. So being able to go out and re-sign the player that you traded for, knowing all well that most of the time in the past, he would have been gone after the one season. Being able to solidify him as the ace going forward is something that can truly solidify and change the way that this fan base views this ownership group. Corbin Burns could be the guy that they build their franchise's rotation around, given the young stars that they have in that lineup. Being able to have a guy that you already now know in the fold from a year in really puts an emphasis on building the right kind of culture, having guys that want to be there, being able to bring back a guy like Corbin Burns can truly give the Baltimore Orioles a leg up in the AL East. But I want to hear from you. Let me know, baseball fans, where do you see Corbin Burns landing for the 2025 season and beyond? Let me know your top five landing destinations for him down in the comments below. Make sure you follow this channel here by hitting that subscribe button and the bell for post notifications as all season season long we're going to be going through different aspects of the baseball world this offseason we're going to be going through the top 25 free agents and where they could potentially land so make sure you keep it locked in as we continue this offseason follow me on social media on x at banter underscore baseball all other social media outlets on ba at baseball banter broadcast so i'm going to thank you for tuning in keep it locked in like i said all offseason and all season long as we look at the world of baseball here on the Baseball Banter Broadcast.